then, you know, got qualified finally. Finally passed all the questions, you know, answered all the questions right. And uh, where's John? John back there? John? Now, when you get qualified, your mates, your esprit de corps buddies, what they do is they take you to the next bar when you get in. And you got to drink your dolphins. It means they take these dolphins that you just won, and they drop them in the biggest bowl of the, in the bar. And they pour every liquor in there that they can in the bar house. Everything goes. And it's about that deep. And they drop the dolphins in the bottom of this. And you have to take these and drink, chug the lug, this concoction of every fucking thing in the what they pick, and catch the dolphins in your teeth. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! That's right. Also, there's some other great, there's a great bar up in Vallejo that just closed called the Horse and the Cow. There's only one left, the only horse and cow left, it's a submarine bar. Horse and cow means submarine bar. Horse and cow, the two animals on either side of King Neptune in the old engravings. Sailors used to get a horse and a cow or a bull tattooed on their ankles so they wouldn't drown. The Horse and Cow Bar. So you go in, here, move a little side here. One of the things in a horse and a cow bar is the upside down margarita. Now, there's a yuga horn, the diving klaxon. Auga! Everybody try that with me now. Auga! Auga! Two of them. Okay, I get it. So, what you do is you ask for, John set me up with an upside down margarita. Not a problem. You bend over the bar like this, and the bartender will proceed to mix a margarita in your mouth. <laughs> There's also another thing about you tie toilet paper. You drop your drawers, put a sheet of toilet paper in your ass, and they set it on fire. <laughs> no. $20 show, I'll do that. <laughs> That's right. Oh, yeah. That's right. Now, now, the first port I pull into is Brisbane, and we're like heroes there. Because the Vietnam War hadn't sent all these guys down there for R and R yet, so we're like we pull in this, and little sailor boys are walking through town, and they just look at it. Hey, yay! Come on in. They buy you a drink, and they want to tell you their war stories and how they had a great time in the Second World War, and all you guys are Yanks are great guys, and drink up, and they take you home for dinner and stuff like that. And there'd be women and waiting outside the gate. They just want to see American sailor. We had a wonderful time. A wonderful time. And for ten days, we're R and R down there in Brisbane, and we pull out there. We're heading up north, and we're heading across uh, the Great Barrier Reef. And we're on a track around the surface. We're traveling on the surface. You always travel on the surface to get anywhere because uh, diesel boats are slow underwater. They're basically, they're not really submarines. They're a submersible boat. Real submarines are these guys uh, that go underwater to stay as long as they want. Diesel boat, it's got to come up, it's got to breathe. So it's not really a submarine, but we won't say anything about that. That night, I'm sleeping in the torpedo tomb up in the torpedo room. And uh, <laughs> lots of these torpedoes all over the place. Now we've been drilling now for only maybe about a month. And about every couple of hours or something, you know, there's like <laughs> all kinds of alarms. You got fire alarms, you got collision arms, you got the dot, you name it, you go. And so I'm sleeping, and all of a sudden, an alarm goes off. Now out of a sound sleep, I turn, put my feet on the deck, and there's four things you gotta do to secure the forward torpedo room for collision. And you gotta hit that hatch, you gotta close that hatch, you gotta hit the speed going along over there, and you gotta twist that valve there. And out of a sound sleep, I find myself lurching one step this way, somebody had got that one. I watched one step this way, somebody had got that one. I turned around to get this one, and the other guy had got that. The other guy had just thrown that switch, and I sat back down on my bunk. <laughs> Looking back on it, it was very automatic. Out of a sound sleep, I had been drilled into discipline so fast. Yeah, but there was just a small boat. Luckily, everybody's right there. And then all of a sudden, we went. We ran aground. 
We ran aground, 1967, November. Okay. Here we go, we're on the, uh, going, we're heading north. Yeah. And the navigator, college boy. <laughs> Taking his sightings like this, you know, and plotting the course and everything, you know, and there's like some recommendations on which way to go, because this is the reef. You know, there's a lot of holes in it. You know, everybody's been traversing this for centuries. And so, you know, but no, he, does, he makes a five-mile error. Five little miles. The current set him. Yeah, it's probably from the Mideast. <laughs> Frederick's Reef is a little horseshoe of a reef. Nothing on it. It's just rock underwater. On low tide, you can see it bubbling there. On high tide, you can't see it at all. It's a moonlit night. Everybody's up, guys are up on the sail looking around. They're checking things up. And they're saying, holy shit. Hit the alarm. <laughs> but you got about 2,000 tons of metallic going here. So it doesn't stop. So it goes. Oops. <laughs> and we're stuck here for three days. That's right. My parents are at home in Cleveland, Ohio, watching the news. Walter Cronkite, the USS Tyroo, ran aground today off the coast of Australia. <laughs> and uh, can't pull us off. We can't back down. And we had a lot of fun, you know. And the big waves came up, and they were bouncing around, going boom, boom, getting beat to shit because the wave when you can't back, bam, bam, bam. And you're in this boat on an angle like this, like this. We're stuck on this angle. So you're living like this for three days. Well, actually for two days, because when the waves kicked up and they shifted around, they shifted us over like this, and we went over to the other side for a day. And at that point, I was up on the sail. I had watched, because I'm in the engine room. Like they said, one of the oilers up to the top, so I, get, I got to be up on top and be a lookout on a lot of the traversing across the, uh, the, the waves. So I got to be a real sailor and see dolphins and glowing water and double rainbows and the moonlight. And I saw all this stuff really great. So... I was ready to do that. I was ready to go. Whoop, whoop. What the fuck? We're right here. But it hit the little fins on the bottom. We got little walker fins on the bottom because we can sit on the bottom like that for keeping it. So it like caught us on the other side. We stayed there for a little bit. That was fun. Is, is it true you lost your virginity in a submarine? <laughs> <laughs> I get it, Liberty. <laughs> Jealous? <laughs> what have you been doing with your life? <laughs> Spielberg just picked up the rights to a book called Thunder Down Below about the USS Barb in the Second World War as one of the highest scoring submarines. So submarines are hot. So uh, see me after the show if you want to produce this show and we're going to make a lot of money together. <laughs> what? Shut up in the back. Hey, I'm talking now. Do I gotta come back there and kick some ass? Yes! Kiss him with tuna. Tattoos. Okay, uh, twice, twice I was taken out for tattoos. Actually, three times. But the first two times I was taken out for tattoos. And your buddies go, hey, you don't got any tattoos? Come on, you can't sail here without tattoos. So you take you out, they get you drunk. And they get you drunk. And we're going to get you, Holmes is getting a tattoo. And everybody starts drinking and drinking. Everybody's... And then they take you to the tattoo store. Everybody's staring around drunk, looking at the walls. You know, a skull, a snake. You know. And showed up with the boat the next day. I didn't get one because I, I, something aesthetic. I don't know. I didn't see a uh, skull, snake. I don't... <laughs> okay, so I didn't get one. But each time... One of my shipmates had a bandage on his arm. I said, what'd you get? He goes, I don't know. <laughs> so then they sent me to an aircraft carrier, which is what brought me here. I was on a bird farm, the Hancock, where you could get any drug you wanted. So we're in the Tonkin Gulf, and I'm in the after engine room down here doing my steam job. And uh, we'd stand on top of the engines where the big exhaust was smoking dope. And uh, in the middle of the Tonkin Gulf, and then if you hear somebody coming down the stairs and you feel a vacuum as they open the door upstairs, and you see these shoes coming down, if they were brown shoes, then you'd let the joint go and it just go suck right up. 
and you were just on top of the engine checking bearing temperatures. No wonder we lost. <laughs>